Hey everybody, Drone Tech here. So a day after the great Tucker Carlson's firing from Fox News, I start seeing this article everywhere. From Politico, good riddance. Pentagon officials cheer Tucker Carlson's ouster. The former Fox host ridiculed top DOD leaders over Biden era policies. Oh no, he did that? Oh man, wait, hold on. Isn't that literally the job of a journalist to hold power to account? This is kind of crazy. So we have the government just openly mocking a journalist for being fired, saying it's a good thing. Uh, here at some point they say it's actually good for America. How's that good for America? All we were told during the Trump years was that any criticism of the media was a serious attack on democracy that put journalists uh, at risk of being uh, hurt or, you know, threatened in some way. But now, for some reason, this guy, who also just happens to go against government, state media narratives, it's good that he's gone. That should send a chill up everyone's spine because that's literally the job of the media and the press is the whole power account. It almost looks to me like Tucker Carlson may be one of the only, if not the only guy out there actually doing that. So I'm just going to go through this article real quick and kind of pick apart the case that they're trying to make here, which again is disturbing because the media, these people at Politico should be backing Tucker Carlson up. But everywhere you look are people sort of in the media celebrating Tucker Carlson being gone, obviously because he is their business competitor, but also their ideological competitor and a guy who stands in the way of the narratives that they're trying to solidify as fact, despite what the truth is. So from maternity flights to diversity policies to Ukraine aid, the military was a favorite punching bag for Tucker Carlson. Now, right off the bat, the first sentence is just total bullshit. Tucker Carlson did not beat up the military. Tucker Carlson is very pro-military. He's very popular in the military to the point that you actually saw outlets like The View, MSNBC, and some Democrats calling for Fox News to be removed from military bases. So it goes on. Now that he's off the air, some Pentagon officials are quietly cheering his departure. Quietly? It's just total BS in and out. This isn't quiet. It's all over the media. Carlson's criticism of Biden era personnel policies appealed to many of the rank and file, which has a large block of conservative members. But at the upper levels of the Department of Defense, news of Carlson's firing from Fox News on Monday was met with delight and outright glee in some corners. That's not a good sign. Again, that that's what you would expect in a sort of dystopian, authoritarian state where the media is just an extension of the government, you know, in Russia and China and North Korea. But increasingly, and maybe it's already well done, but increasingly that's what we have here in the United States. And you actually have members of the media who are supposedly journalists, who are supposed to be holding power to account, actually protecting the power. But of course, they only do that if the government is being controlled by the Democrats. We're a better country without him banging on our military every night in front of hundreds of thousands of people. See, they so badly want to deflect the fact that Carlson, what he focused on actually was the leadership and what they were doing and accountability for it. Is this improving our military? Are you just doing these things to appeal to a certain uh, demographic, a uh, certain political ideological demographic? They're going to focus on the things Tucker criticized having to do with women in the military. But in fact, Carlson talked a lot about the fact that white people were framed as the problem by Lloyd Austin, who's the defense secretary. Uh, he also spoke out about the Space Force commander who was let go after he voiced concerns about Marxism and critical race theory in the U.S. Armed Forces, which is a totally legitimate criticism because there, this stuff has been injected into all of our institutions out of nowhere. Why? Where's the scrutiny? Where's the criticism? Where's the accountability for if these weird far left ideological beliefs being injected into our institutions are actually helping them? Anybody who asks these questions are instantly attacked, just like Carlson has been. Carlson has also spoke out a lot about these inclusion boards, which Carlson suggested. It is a fact that standards are lowered for these so they can prioritize essentially identity politics into military readiness. So they have to conform to these Marxist ideological beliefs. And the suggestion from Tucker Carlson is obviously, does this make our military stronger? 
it's a legitimate question but simply asking it apparently is beating up the military which is just not true carlson wants the military to be strong he loves the u.s military like all of us do but now you have actual government officials the people who were the media is supposed to be holding accountable just gleefully dancing on the fact that their biggest critic in the media has now been silent that should scare everybody. It should scare these people in the media. But they're fine with it as long as it's all being done in service of a, an agenda that they agree with. No more questions about these far left DEI uh, uh, policies in the military, whether they actually help. We are told that diversity is our strength, but why don't we see any of these DEI policies, for example, in the NFL? If these things make a team stronger, why don't we see women in, on NFL teams? Why are places like the NFL so undiverse where it's mostly black males? Is it because that they're the best? Probably. These teams have to be at the top, the cream of the crop. So uh, we want our U.S. military to also be at the top, the cream of the crop, the best people in those positions. But if you're now just injecting people who normally wouldn't be in these positions, lowering standards, you're obviously going to lower the quality of the military force. That's why we don't do it in NFL teams or NBA teams or these or uh, professional baseball teams or hockey teams. Because again, these outfits have to be the best of the best. You can't do that when you're lowering standards to oblige some sort of ideological pseudo-religious beliefs. The tension between the former cable host and Pentagon leadership isn't new. Carlson drew the ire of top DOD officials early in the Biden administration for personal attacks on the number of military leaders. He's a journalist. Like, what do you, these people should have nothing to say about it. A slew of conservative leaders quickly followed Carlson's lead, giving rise to a small but vocal minority that to this day continues to hammer DOD officials. They're not hammering DOD officials. They are oversight committees. That's their job. Oversight of power. That's why these people are elected into government. Like, the, the fact that I'm reading this is scary. Like, the, I should not be reading this in America. This is something I would expect in Russia. So in Russia, you have maybe a news outlet or a, a reporter who speaks out against Vladimir Putin. This is the kind of reporting you would expect to see in the media about that person, right? <laughs> we should not be seeing that in this country. So yeah, our government now, along with their state media mouthpieces, are celebrating the fact that their biggest critic, the, the guy who was best at exposing them, has now been silenced and won't be a thorn in their side any longer. Although, I wouldn't celebrate too quickly because I think you may have only made Tucker Carlson even stronger. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, subscribe. Make sure to leave a comment to continue the discussion. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one.